He was born a slave and died one of the most influential teachers of his time. But Epictetus wouldn't have considered himself a teacher. He was a philosopher, a stoic philosopher, a man who sought a very specific kind of knowledge, the knowledge that when applied helped with facing and overcoming the inevitable difficulties of life. And through a combination of his own life experiences and the wisdom of his mentor, the Stoic philosopher Musonius Rufus, Epictetus had the kind of insights that people traveled hundreds of miles for the chance to hear, if, even if only for an hour or two. They sent their children to hear him. Even the poor, the affluent, the powerful, even the future emperor Hadrian were told they all vied for a chance to sit in and sit down at Epictetus' feet. And fortunately, there was a young man who regularly got to listen in to Epictetus, and he wrote down what Epictetus had to say. And remarkably, these notes survived to us and have been passed on to some of history's greatest figures over the last few thousand years. The Roman emperor Marcus Aurelius wrote in his journal thanking the man who had loaned him a copy of Epictetus. Theodore Roosevelt famously carried a copy of Epictetus with him along his incredibly dangerous River of Doubt expedition. Admiral James Stockdale had Epictetus with him as he led fighter squadrons in daily combat in Vietnam, and it was on Epictetus whom he leaned when he'd had to survive seven years as a prisoner of war. The list is endless, and hopefully after this video you'll understand why and add your name to the list of Epictetus's admirers, because he truly was one of the wisest and most inspiring people to ever live. So here are five quotes from Epictetus that will change your life. Our first job is this, Epictetus said, to divide and distinguish things into two categories, externals I cannot control, but the choices I make with regard to what I do control. Where will I find good and bad in me? in my choices. This single skill, Epictetus said, will change your life. The art of differentiating between what's up to us and what is not up to us, what we have influence over and what we do not. A flight is delayed because of weather. No amount of yelling at an airline representative will end the storm. No amount of wishing will make you taller or shorter or born in a different country. No matter how hard you try, you can't make someone like you. On top of all that time spent hurling yourself at these immovable objects is time not spent on the things we can change. As Epictetus said, all we can control is the choices they make right now. And the same is true for you. Focus on making clear what parts of your day are within your control and what parts are not. You will not only be happier, but you will have a distinct advantage over all the people who fail to realize they are wasting their time on unwinnable battles. It is not events that disturb people, Epictetus said, it's their judgment about things. Albert Ellis, one of the most influential figures in modern psychology, said it was this line that guided the development of cognitive behavioral therapy. Epictetus said it was the most important power we have. Something happens, but we decide that it's unfair or bad or a failure. Someone says something, but we decide that it's offensive or presumptuous or rude. If someone succeeds in provoking you, Epictetus said, realize that your mind is complicit in the provocation. Events are objective. The opinion that they're objectionable is just that, your opinion, and you always have the power to change it. There's a reason this very quote is on the wall of the training facility of the Pittsburgh Pirates in Bradenton, Florida, because even in sports it matters, right? There is no good or bad, there is just the game in front of you. You have to focus on that. No amount of yelling or complaining changes an umpire's call. You have to focus, you have to be present. You can't beat yourself down or puff yourself up. Get rid of self-conceit, Epictetus said. It is impossible to learn that which one thinks they already know. Epictetus kept his eyes and ears open always, actively looking for opportunities to learn from everyone and everything. And this is the attitude we must take with us day in and day out, whether we're one of the best at what we do or just starting out, it doesn't matter. Every person we meet, every situation we find ourselves in, every book we read or movie we watch, there is an opportunity to learn, to keep getting better, to take another step forward on the path to progress. And that was one of Epictetus's favorite questions. How have you made progress? More than anything else, we answer that question by focusing on what we don't know on where we can get better, on where we can improve, rather than patting ourselves on the back 
for how great we are. The true man is revealed in difficult times, Epictetus said. So when trouble comes, think of yourself as a wrestler paired with a tough young buck. For what purpose? To turn you in to Olympic class material. We can think of hardship many ways as failure, as unfairness, as the end of the conversation. Clearly this was not meant to be. We say they don't want me to succeed. What's the point in trying? Or we can choose, we can train ourselves to see it a better way. As grist for the mill, as a chance to learn about endurance, patience, resilience, struggle as a chance to prove our mettle, as resistance that is making our muscles stronger, as a sparring partner. Epictetus preferred the latter and became in his time and in ours the ultimate symbol of the ability of a human being to overcome dark circumstances. He said it was not about accepting hardship or resigning ourselves to it, but agreeing to work with it, to decide to make the most of it, to see hardship as an opportunity, not as an obstacle. And in this way, we can turn everything that happens to us into fuel and we can be made better and stronger by everything that happens. And so we have one more quote to come from Epictetus, but before I do, if you're interested at all in Stoic philosophy, I'd love to have you join us in the daily email, the daily meditation we do at Daily Stoic, dailystoic.com slash email. It's one Stoic thought every single day for free, designed to help inspire you, instill this ancient wisdom in your life, and help you practice those four Stoic virtues of courage, moderation, justice and wisdom that were so essential to Epictetus and will help you become the person you want to become. And if you've heard about the email and have delayed signing up, let me give you a quick quote from Epictetus. He says, how much longer until you demand the best for yourself? And that's what we try to do in this email. And so the last quote from Epictetus is this, don't explain your philosophy embody it. It's always been tempting to talk a good game and people have been doing it for thousands of years. Epictetus talked about those nauseating types who brag about how many books they've read and spew out facts and quotes and tidbits. These people are not wise, he'd say. They just know a lot of useless trivia. The whole point of Stoicism is what you do. It's who you are. It's an act of virtue, not talking about virtue or reading about it or writing about it or watching videos about it. If you didn't learn these things in order to demonstrate them in practice, Epictetus asked, Asked, what did you learn them for? He would have loved the expression we have today, don't talk about it, be about it. How much better would we all be if we put less energy into talking and more into being and into doing, in letting our actions and results speak for us, in turning the lessons of an Epictetus or a Musonius Rufus or a Marcus Aurelius into real world action and results. And that, Epictetus said, is what earns one the title, philosopher nothing else. So if you're interested in finding more about Epictetus, please sign up dailystoic.com slash email. And as Epictetus said, don't talk about your philosophy, embody it. Hey, thanks for watching Daily Stoic. If you want to learn more about Stoicism, you can check out some of our other videos here. Subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. Keep learning, keep studying, and remember those four Stoic virtues, courage, justice, temperance, and wisdom.